Greetings from Virginia. My name is Scott Harris, founder and general manager of Catoctin Creek Distillery. And today we're in my home bar, what we affectionately call Ken's Bar. This is named after my grandfather who had a very swanky bar in the 1950s. And it was my goal to re uh, replicate that bar in as much as possible uh, in our home bar. So we have quite a collection here, many, many bottles that we were given from many industry contacts, uh, more than I can probably drink in my lifetime. So today in Ken's Bar, we're going to do a cocktail for you, one of our Catoctin Creek favorites, and then I'll give you a little plus one additionally to it. We're going to be using the Roundstone Rye 92 proof. This is our 94 point winning uh, rye, the number three rated rye in America in the uh, year 2020. That's probably the only good thing to come out of 2020. And we're going to use the Roundstone Rye 92 proof for this cocktail. The first cocktail that we're going to do is a traditional Manhattan. Manhattan is a great old cocktail from the 1800s. It's our signature cocktail for the distillery. Our rye really goes nicely in there with the vermouth. Uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic old school cocktail. And we like to say a great Manhattan begins in Virginia. So we'll start with some ice and we're going to put some ice into our mixing glass. And we're going to take a jigger and pour in about two ounces of round stone rye. The traditional Manhattan recipes called for a ratio of two to one. So two parts whiskey, one part vermouth. That ratio was the original ratio for recipes of other types of drinks like it, like the martini and such, although martinis today have gotten much drier just as a part of normal today's tradition. Now we've got a rye in there and I like to use a very good quality vermouth. So we're using the Carpano Antica vermouth from Italy, a wonderful Italian vermouth. And we're going to put in one ounce of that. All right. Now we have in our vermouth. We're going to grab a couple dashes of our bitters. I'm going to use just a traditional cocktail bitters like Angostura. A couple dashes in there like so. And we're going to bring it up here and stirring nicely like that. Now I've got some house-made cocktail cherries that we make here at my home, which is simply a recipe of sugar, some spices, some whiskey, and cherries that we harvest fresh. Virginia is quite the cherry growing state. They grow naturally here and quite delicious. And so these are sour cherries off of my neighbor's tree. And I like them, so I'm gonna use two. And we'll do some cherries in the glass there. And I always like to just take an indulgent little extra spoonful of the cherry syrup for the cocktail, sweetens it up a little bit. And we'll take this, stirring it once more, grab our strainer, and pouring into a beautiful coupe glass. Even these coupe glasses are special. We found these at local thrift shops uh, in the area as some of our older patrons pass away. They leave behind some really gorgeous um, stemware that you can find for really reasonable prices. So this is our Catoctin Creek Manhattan. Cheers to Virginia, cheers to the UK, and cheers to 2021. Ah, fantastic. Now I'm not done yet, so let's try another one here. We're going to do a second cocktail. We're going to make a Sazerac, which is a traditional New Orleans cocktail also made with rye whiskey. And we're gonna use the same rye, the Roundstone Rye 92 proof here. And the Sazerac is one of my favorites. It starts with a nice chunky rocks glass. And we're going to do what's called frappéing the glass, which means to introduce cold ice water into the glass because we want the glass ice cold. So we're just gonna add some ice and water there. I won't be drinking it anytime soon. And once again, we'll grab for the Roundstone Rye and we're gonna introduce two ounces of the Roundstone Rye into this cocktail. So one ounce and a second ounce, nicely poured, not spilling. That's the main criterion here. And then we're going to take our simple sugar, which is down here in my cabinet. Here we are. Some simple syrup that we pre-make at home. It's simply one part water, one part sugar, boiled until it dissolves, and then you can bottle it up in these nice little bottles like so. So we're gonna take about a half ounce, not too much, we don't want it too sweet, of the simple sugar. 
into there, stirring with no ice at this point. Now we're going to take Peychaud's bitters, which are the red ones that we like here in America. These are a New Orleans style bitter. And we're going to do four dashes in there. All right, four dashes of bitters. Bitters, if you don't know, are the seasoning of cocktails. It's the salt and pepper of the cocktail to give it backbone and, and depth and complexity. All right, so we've stirred those together. I'm gonna to introduce a little bit more ice. Now, to chill it down. Stirring that in this mixing glass. And now that we've done chilling our rocks glass, I'm going to dump the water into the sink, and we're going to do an absinthe rinse. So, with an absinthe rinse, we are going to just take a little bit of absinthe in here. This is a lovely absinthe that we have from New York State, a friend of mine, Cheryl, that makes it. And we're gonna put just enough in there to swirl it around the glass. So, swirling the absinthe around the glass to coat all the sides. Absinthe is a strong flavor, has notes of licorice and, and whatnot, and so we want to make sure that we have just enough in there, tossing out whatever little bit we didn't have left. Then we're going to take the uh, Sazerac here and pour it into the glass. All right, like so. And then we're going to introduce, oh, <laughs> a large rock, slippery bugger. And placing that into the glass. We have our drink now and Traditionally, we would take a lemon peel and express it over the drink, and that would give us a nice little bit of lemon essence at the end. Um, having no lemons here today, I will do something a little different. We can just simply take some lemon bitters, and we can just put a drop on top, just like that. You'll get the same effect, that nice lemon essence on top of the drink. The first thing to hit your nose should be the lemon essence, making that a traditional Sazerac. So here's a Sazerac and a Manhattan from Catoctin Creek. Cheers. Oh, that's heavenly. Well, now that you've hopefully got a drink handy, please listen to our Spotify playlist featuring some of the greatest music around this region, the Appalachian region of Virginia. Cheers.